Good morning, everyone. It is November 7th. Uh, hopefully everyone's doing well and looking forward to deer hunting this season for those who do hunt. Uh, and if you do, good luck. Uh, thank you for coming back for another retirement planning coffee talk with me. Retirement re weekly or somewhat weekly. I haven't been the most consistent, but my goal is to be more consistent moving forward. Retirement planning coffee talks are a casual way for me to connect and answer questions, even if you're not a client, at no cost. If you'd rather not ask questions online or in person, Feel free to message me directly and I'll do my best to get back to you in a timely manner. There's no pressure to work with me or become a client by joining online or stopping by my office with questions. My, op my mission is to provide my clients with the highest quality advice and service. To ma maintain this level of care, I limit my practice to 100 active clients at all times, at most, as I have a fiduciary responsibility to each and every one of them. While I cap the number of clients I work with, I'm dedicated to serving as many people as possible by sharing valuable information and answering your questions. That's why these coffee talks mean so much to me. Disclaimer, this content is not legal, tax, or investment advice. Always consult a qualified professional regarding your personal situation. And since this is a live session, I may occasionally make a mistake, but I'll do my best not to. I'm looking forward to some great conversations and hope you have a wonderful day. Please feel free to comment with questions anytime, now, or during the video. I'd much rather answer your questions than read through articles that may or may not be relevant to you. Thanks. I look forward to hopefully seeing some, a bunch of questions come through soon. And if I don't, I will uh, try to find some uh, articles to highlight that may or may not be valuable to you. So, like I said, please ask questions if you have them. Um, and if you don't, I'll do my best to provide value through some articles that I can find online to highlight for you. All right, I'm not seeing any questions come through, so let's just pull up a, oh, good morning. Good morning, Ross, thank you. Um, with that, I am just going to pull up a article here. It says, how the 2024 election could affect your portfolio. Uh, and it's, it's from on Morningstore.com, written by Amelia Fredlick. I believe on November 6, 2024. Now keep in mind the main point of this statement is how could it affect your portfolio? It's amazing how much conjecture is out there when it comes to financial and retirement planning about what could happen and they make they try but they try to make it sound like this is what's going to happen to terrify you and make you make decisions or just come back and click on their uh, articles. Our goal is to prepare for what can happen while preparing for what we'd like to happen. So, what to know about the economic and investment implications of this year's election? First, uncertainty around elections can present ca certain pitfalls for investors. Again, can present. Um, I'll, I'll just do a quick reminder. Back in 2020, it sounded like the world was going to end, right? We had COVID, Ukraine wars, a massive inflation was coming, and all the other things that happened in the last four years. If anyone was would have told you that the market was going to go up 30% over the next couple of years, would you have believed them? Right, so just because things may seem volatile or scary right now, it does not automatically mean the market's gonna tank. It might, but it doesn't mean it will, just because things are uncertain, okay? So Dan Kemp, Global Chief Investment Officer for Morningstar Investment Management explains, when investors face uncertainty, they might seek narratives that predict the future and then change their portfolios accordingly. This can lead to volatility in asset prices, risking investors being what whips whipsawed i've never heard that word before as prices overshoot in one direction and then another so it is vital to remember an old investing axiom do not just do something stand there again do not just do something stand there when everyone else is freaking out it might be more valuable for you to stick to what your plan is the most important thing an investor can do is stick to their plan and avoid reacting that said, the election's outcome may have policy ramifications for investors and their money over the long term. This may include retirement related issues such as Social Security's solvency and the availability of environmental, social and governance funds in employer sponsored retirement plans, the cost of health care, health care, the future of Medicare and taxation. We've they've compiled these insights that unpack what a new administration can mean for investors. The 2024 election in your portfolio. What should you do with your portfolio in response to the election? In short, probably nothing, and I agree, or at least nothing that depends on the winner. 
Your time horizon and goals should be your portfolio's key drivers, not who's in the White House. That's 100% accurate. Uh, in my personal belief, we should not be making decisions out based on what other people are doing or what has happened externally. It should be completely based on what your goals are in your life situations. Ross, I'm glad you agree. Um, the stock market goes up and down under every president, but the path of least resistance has always been higher, says Danny Noonan, investment writer for Morningstar Investment Management. Still, it's natural for investors to have questions about the potential opportunities and risks that may emerge this year. Our analysts share their insights on how to think about the factors that may influence your investments. So now they just have a link to a whole bunch of other articles that I'm not going to jump through. But I think that's extremely valuable. The stock market goes up and down under every president, but the path of least resistance has always been higher. So do nothing unless your life events dictate or your or your personal goals. All right, so hopefully that's valuable. Like I said, please leave questions or comments in um, at any time, specifically about things you'd like me to discuss or about the articles that I've already highlighted. Seeing none, I will go to a second article here. It is, again, Morningstar, it's easy, easy pickings. Um, it's the title is Stocks, Dollar, Bitcoin Rise as Trump Wins Second Term. Financials, energy, and small cap stocks lead U.S. equities higher with Republican candidate winning the presidency. Written by Johanna Englund. I know I butchered that name, but I have no idea how to say it. And I agree, Ross, do, do not make long-term decisions based on short-term factors. Um... So going with this article, stocks rallied at, so if those who haven't paid attention, the market's been way up uh, the last couple of days. Now, whether that's because of Donald Trump or not, that's for you to decide. But the point is, if you would have listened to the wrong articles before the election, if Donald Trump was going to win, President Trump, the market was supposedly going to tank, right? The world was going to end if you listened to certain people. So it's very important to ignore the news when it comes to what you should be doing with your money. Now, it's kind of ironic because I'm literally highlighting news articles, but hopefully I'm picking out the valuable parts and explaining what parts to be ignored. So with that, stocks rallied on at Wednesday's New York market open after Donald Trump claimed victory in the 2024 U.S. presidential election. Leading the gains following the election results were financial and ener energy stocks as well as small company stocks. The Dow Jones index jumped 3%, while the broader S&P 500 rose 2%, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq rose 2.3%. The small cap benchmark Russell, Russell 2000, another projected Trump beneficiary, rallied 4.5% as of 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. At the same time, the U.S. dollar index hit its highest point since July, rallying against other global currencies while the euro fell. In the bond market, yields jumped. Investors here have been increasingly concerned about growing U.S. federal budget deficits. Forward visibility relieves markets. With the, Re with the Republican Party on the cusp of a clean sweep of Congress and the presidency, U.S. markets are rallying. This is less an endorsement of every facet of the Republican manifesto and more because markets like visibility and clear governmental control provides that, explains Michael Field, European market strategist at Morningstar. So what he's basically saying is the markets don't care if it's Democrat or Republican. They do like when one party or the other owns everything when it comes to the House, the presidency, and the Senate, because it's more likely there'll be consistency and clarity and visibility in what they're trying to do. Um, stocks investors expect to stocks investors expect to benefit from a business friendly regulatory environment saw dramatic gains, with financials up roughly six percent and energy up three point seven percent. Solar energy stocks and utilities struggled. Cryptocurrencies, considered part of the so called Trump trade, also rallied. Bitcoin brief, briefly surpassed $75,000, topping its previous all-time peak reached in March. Trump has voiced his support of cryptocurrencies in the past. Other popular picks within the Trump trade also outperformed. Trump Media and Technology Group, DJT, rose as high as 14% in regular trading after soaring more than 30% in the pre-market, but it paired back to gains of roughly 6% by midday. Meanwhile, Tesla, headed by vocal Trump supporter and donor Elon Musk, rose 13%. The 10-year Treasury yield jumped to around 4.47% Wednesday morning from 4.26% Tuesday. On speculation that Trump's proposed tax cuts and other spending plans would increase the fiscal deficit, while possible tariffs could reignite inflation. In the background, investors expect that if the Republican Party 
claims control of Congress, this could lead to substantial corporate tax rate cuts and lessened regulatory pressures. European equities first rally, then retreat. So I don't know how much we, I don't think we're gonna go too deep into the European markets, but generally speaking, they just talk about European stocks. Um, the Europe 100 index turned negative after initially rising 2%. Yeah, I don't think we're, we're not gonna do a deep dive into the European markets. So hopefully that's a valuable, uh, Essentially, so far, it's only been two days, uh, things are up, right? And that's that's helpful for anyone who has money invested. So that's a good thing. Regardless of your political beliefs, I'm not here to debate those. Those are for your personal choice. And I have no interest in deciding that. So here's the third thing. I haven't seen any questions yet. So again, please leave some if you have them or, or comments or thoughts. Thanks, Ross, for your comments so far. With that being said, I, the third article I'd like to highlight, or it's actually more of a fact sheet, is Social Security Fact Sheet 2025 Social Security Changes. This is really important for those who are already retired, and it's sort of important for those who are planning for retirement, right? So it's nice to know what's happening now so you can kind of get a general idea of what may happen when you're in retirement. But if you're already retired, this is extremely important. So this is the cost of living COLA. Um, Based on the increase in, and I'll, I'll try to post a picture of this, uh, if it'll let me. I don't know if it'll let me post a picture on Facebook with my video. We'll do my best. If not, I'll comment a picture. So you can try to see this yourself, but I'll also include the link to access it yourself, like I usually do, and hopefully that'll work for you. So I know I had to download this, but based on the increase in the consumer price index from the third quarter of 2023 through the third quarter of 2024, Social Security and Supplemental Social Security beneficiaries will receive a 2.5% COLA cost of living increase for 2025. So basically what that's saying is if you are making $100, if you're getting paid $100 a month this year from Social Security, next year you'll be being paid about $102.50. All right, so it's going to increase by about two and a half percent. So that's the nice thing about Social Security is it does naturally step up. Um, but keep in mind with that, ta your taxable income brackets for Social Security taxes haven't moved in like 30 years. So your taxes may also go up. OK. Other important 2025 Social Security information is as follows. Tax rate in 2024, the employee tax rate and the self-employed tax rate are going to stay the exact same at 7.65 percent for the employee. So it's going to be 7.65% again. For the self-employed, it's going to be 15.3% in 2024. Again, 15.3% in 2025. Note the 7.65% tax rate is the combined rate for Social Security and Medicare. The Social Security portion, OASDI, is 6.2% on earnings up to the applicable taxable maximum amount. The Medicare portion, HI, is 1.45% on all earnings. Also, so Social Security con contributions is capped whereas Medicare portion contributions are not capped. Also, as of January 2013, individuals with earned income of more than $200,000 or $250,000 from married couples filing jointly pay an additional 0.9% in Medicare taxes. The tax rates shown above do not include the 0.9%. So, breaking that down. First, Social Security taxes is about 6.2%, but it caps at income levels. Medicare taxes is about 1.45%, and that's not capped. In fact, it actually increases by 0.9% if you make over $200,000 an individual or $250,000 as a married couple. So maximal, maximum taxable earnings for Social Security in 2024 is 168600 So if you make over $168,600, you don't have to keep paying Social Security on every dollar made above that, which also means you won't make that in retirement, okay? Uh, 2025... The, the maximum is going up to 176,100. That's a sizable increase. That's about $7,500 increase. Medicare HI only. There is no limit, like we highlighted. The quarter of coverage, uh, quarter of coverage 2024, the maximum is 1,730. 2025 is 1,810. Retirement earnings test exempt, exempt amounts. So 2024 under full retirement is $22,320 per year or $1,860 per month. In 2025, it's $23,420 per year, or $1,950 per month. Note, $1 in benefits will be withheld for every $2 in earnings above the limit. So what that says 
if you make over $22,320 of income while drawing Social Security, $1 in benefits will be withheld for every $2 of earnings above the limit. So every $2 you make, $1 less of Social Security is going to get paid. So you're basically getting pay, paid half, right? So it's definitely wise to think twice about working in retirement. I, I think you should if you're looking for a purpose and something to do, but be aware of how your Social Security is being affected by the income you're making if income is the primary driver. The year an individual reaches full retirement age, $59,520. In 2024, in 2025, it's $62,160 per year. Uh, note, applies only to earnings for months prior to attaining full retirement age. $1 in benefits will be withheld for every $3 in earnings above the limit. So the first number, $22,320 per year, is if you're under full retirement, which for most people is 67. The $59,520 number this year is for if you are full retirement, so 67 plus, depending on your age of birth. In 2025, those numbers are going up, like I highlighted. Uh, beginning of the month, an individual attains full retirement age. There is no limit. So once you become full retirement age, you can make as much money as you want and won't affect your Social Security. It's before or the year of your full retirement age that making income does or may affect your social security income. So with that social security disability thresholds in 2024, non-blind is $1,550 per month, blind is $2,590 per month, trial work period is $1,110 per month. 2025, non-blind is gonna go from $1,550 to $1,620, blind is gonna go from $2,590 to $2,700, Trial work periods can go from $1,110 per month to $1,160 per month. The maximum Social Security benefit worker worker retirement, retiring at full retirement age, who that was a mouthful. In 2024, it's $3,822 per month. In 2025, it's $4,018 per month. So the most, no matter how much money you made through retirement, the most Social Security benefits you can get at full retirement age in 2024 is $3,822. In 2025, it's gonna be 4,018, so that's a nice jump. Social Security Federal Payment Standard. The end of, all right, so we're just getting really long in the tooth of, of subplots here. Again, I'll post some pictures. Um, I'm guessing it's hard to follow along with what I'm saying at this point anyways, because I'm just rambling up numbers. So with that, point is, Social Security is changing, going about two and a half percent. Be aware of how that affects your retirement planning. And if you're not sure, Reach out to someone like me or whoever you trust and have a conversation. Any with that, I'll stay on till about nine, unless there's a ton of questions, then I'll stay on later than that. But if I don't receive any, I'll probably jump off at about nine o'clock. Any questions or thoughts? All right, I'll read one more article from Morningstar here. Then give me about, close the last nine minutes unless some questions come in. And the title of the article is Investors Tend to Win No Matter Who Prevails in an Election, written by Andrew Daniels, and this is back on October 31st. So he wrote this before the election. Let's see how much of what he said has come true so far. Plus, and he says, plus five charts on 2024's third quarter. Election season is underway in the United States. With each side painting dystopian visions of the future if their opponent wins the White House in November 2024, it's important to tune out the noise and keep things in perspective. I completely agree. The U.S. economy remains in good shape, and the stock market tends to do well under both parties' presidential terms. Those are just a few of the many takeaways in Morningstar Markets Observer, a quarterly publication that draws on careful research and market insights. Preston Caldwell, Morningstar's senior U.S. economist, also digs into historical U.S. trade policy and the impact of Republican candidate Donald Trump's proposed tariffs on U.S. gross domestic product. Interested readers can download the full report there. I'll, again, I'll include the link. U.S. economy has outperformed since the start of the pandemic. U.S. real GDP has grown at 2.3% average annual rate since the fourth quarter of 2019 through 2024's second quarter. Not a great growth rate exceeding, so it exceeded, but not great, what most forecasters had projected on the eve of the pandemic. The U.S. economy has soared past other major advanced economies over that time frame. 
Each of these economies are running near maximum output, so the causes of the divergence are likely more on the supply side than the demand side. Productivity growth has been impressive in the United States. That's good news. Inflation is marching back to normal. Also good news. Core inflation for most major economies has recorded greatly after has receded greatly after peaking in 2022. We're not quite at the point in to declare mission accomplished in the battle against high inflation, says Caldwell, but it's close. Inflation should continue to normalize as supply disruptions are dissolved, resolved and demands cool off. China could also transit, transmit its low inflation to the rest of the world via expanded exports, but this could be met with protectionist backlash. Election cycles have historically a wide but typically positive range of outcomes. The below chart shows the distribution of daily price returns, that is, including dividend, excluding dividends, for the S&P 500 index over four-year U.S. presidential election cycles dating back to 1928. Starting November 1st of each election election year through October 31st, four years later, the average price index index price return is a cumulative 34%. Though there's a wide range of outcomes, both Trump 2016 through 2020 and Biden so far in 2020 through 2024 oversaw returns well above the historical trend. Elections, political parties, and markets, a mixed bag. We sorted one and four year total returns for the SP 500 index starting November 1st for the last 25 US presidential elections. Forward one year returns were positive in 10 of the 13 Democratic won elections compared with nine of 12 of the Republican won elections. So literally both had positive all but three times. Um, over forward four year periods, returns were positive for Democrats in 11 of 12 instances. For Republicans, it was nine of 12. Since November 2020, when Democrat Joe Biden won, the index was up 17.4% annualized through September 2024, though Biden's four-year returns do not appear in the below chart since the cycle hasn't been completed. Again, I'm not going to talk about all the charts. It's hard to explain a visual, but if I will include the link if you want to click on it. High tariffs were once the norm for the United States. Low tariff rates have been the norm for the United States and most other major ec economies since the end of World War II, but that hasn't always been the case. From the second half of the 19th century to the early 20th, the U.S. had very restrictive tariffs. One key lesson is the high tariffs, once they're in place, are very hard to dislodge. Owing to vested interests and the need for unified control over government, Douglas Irving's clashing over commerce is a magisterial account of this history. High tariffs could reduce U.S. real GDP. In contrast to most issues, U.S. presidents can enact sweeping changes on trade without congressional approval. Caldwell estimates that Donald Trump's proposed tariffs hike, tariff hikes would subtract 1.9% from the long-run long level of U.S. real GDP. Still, he believes it's more likely than not that Trump would back down from the threatened tariffs, particularly the 10% uniform hike. This leads to a probability-weighted impact of 0.13%. So, with that, a lot said there, but... Basically, what he's pointing out is that regardless of who wins the election, as we know who won the election now, but when he wrote it, he didn't, markets are usually up for the next one to four years after an election. And we know that historically, right? When we look at the history of the, the probability of returns over the history of the stock market, I'm going to pull this up because I think it's really important. You can't see it, but again, I will reference it, and if you want a copy let me know and I'd be more than happy to provide one for you or just walk through it with you. So this is the probability of positive returns put together by Dimensional, which is a company that we leverage often for our custom investments for our clients. And what it basically shows is that if you look at the SP 500 index since 1937, on any given day, the market's up 53.4%. So you might as well just flip a coin. All right. On any given month, the market's up about 63% of the time. Over any year, it's up about 77.5% of the time. So about three out of four years, the market's up. But that means one out of four, it's down. So we can't act shocked when it happens. It happens, all right? On any five-year period, it's up about 92.6% of the time. And almost any 10-year period, it's up about 97.3% of the time. So again, as much as the media wants to fearmonger you into being terrified and buying gold and hiding your money under your mattress... The market will have negative years, yes, but more often than not, regardless of who the president is, the market will go up before it will go, more than it will go down 
historically speaking. We can't history doesn't always predict the future, but if history does repeat itself, that should hold true going forward. So we'll see. The main point of all this is, like we highlighted earlier on and Ross commented, do not make long-term decisions based on short-term factors. Our financial plan should reflect our financial goals and our financial lives, not the media and what, our, what the media is saying or what our neighbor is saying or necessarily how we're feeling, as much as that's hard to separate how we feel versus what logically makes sense. So with that being said, I'll, st I'll stay on for a couple more minutes. I'll post the comments. I'll post the links to these articles in the comment so you have access to them as well as I'll take some screenshots so you have access to those as well in case you would like to uh, see the social security and probability of positive returns that I referenced. And if I don't receive any questions, I will then log off in the next couple minutes here and wish you guys all the best, a great day and good luck with hunting. All right, seeing no additional questions, I appreciate everyone's time and have, hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, please stop by my office if you have questions, comment on any post or direct message me with questions, comments, or con concerns or requests for future co conversations. I always love answering your direct questions a lot more than I enjoy reading an article that may or may not be valuable to you. So thank you so much for your time. If you're willing and able and being feeling extra generous, please share my video or podcast with a friend because the more people I can reach, the more value I can provide. And that's what really matters to me the most is providing as much value as I possibly can and serving as many good people as possible. So thank you so much for and I hope you have a great day. Bye.